Hi, welcome to Anne Bonnie Bags. This is not a normal bag tutorial for how to sew one bag. This is about um, the tools that you need uh, for bag making and this video is meant for beginners. Beginner bag makers. So I'm going to show you the tools that you absolutely need and then the tools that you probably want because it's so much more fun to make bags with them. And I'm showing you some of the materials that you can make bags of. Are you ready to get started? So let's start with the sewing machines. So one thing you're really going to need is a sewing machine. This is the sewing machine that I started making bags with. I think I paid $278 uh, back then. And you don't need all this embroidery. All you need is a straight stitch sewing machine that works. So this is a regular household machine. If you love bag making, or, or if you think you're going to love bag making, then you want to advance to something better. And here is the machine I'm using today. It's a Juki 2010Q. And the reason I'm using, it costs $1,000. And a full industrial machine with a walking foot, I think maybe you can get for $1,300. But the thing is, this is mobile. You can lift it, you can, you can tuck it away. An industrial machine sits in a table and you cannot just hide it away in a closet. Well, unless it's a huge closet. So it's more mobile. This one, the little one here, is more mobile than a full industrial. It's half industrial, so it goes pretty fast. It is strong. It is a great machine for bag making. Although it's not as good as a full industrial walking foot machine that is meant for leather and stuff that can sew through so many more layers than this one. It works for a regular bag maker. When you want to get into the real heavy stuff, you might want a real industrial machine. Enough about the sewing machines. These are the tools that are totally necessary and you can imagine this does not cost a lot. You need good scissors. These are fabric scissors. You need that extra, extra large. Then you need th uh, uh, small scissors for cutting threads, snip threads off. And also some, a, a sturdy little scissor that can cut little snips around the curves. So scissors are important. These are also practical for, to, to cut little threads off. Another very, very important uh, tool is the seam ripper. You have to think of the seam ripper as your friend. It will help you get a better result. Everyone makes mistakes and it hurts. But with the seam ripper, you will uh, be able to, to take up your seams and do the work again and this time better. So this is your friend, even though it will make you cry sometimes. And then this is an awl. This is a very good tool for sewing. You help feed the fabric because then you don't have to feed with your fingers. You know, when you're new, it's easier to sew through your fingers and it's very painful when you sew through your nail and your finger and the needle comes out here. Also, it's a good idea to actually sew with glasses because when you are sewing happily along, and you're sewing straight over um, a zipper pull or a metal end of a zipper, the needle might break and it has happened that the pieces fly, fly up. And I know a lady who got a piece of a needle in the eye, so maybe it's smart to use glasses, protection glasses, if you're safety conscious. And then what you need are, are these little clips. You think, well, you really need clips. And yes, you do. They're so quick. They're easier to use than pins. The pins are old fashioned now. They use, we use them for some things, but, but these clips are perfect. And then they come in a larger size. They're very good. I love the clips. When you sew, you just as you see, as you've seen on YouTube, you just pinch them off the, the, when you sew. So these are important clips. Then you need uh, needles. This is sewing machine needles for 
a little thicker fabrics because you are going to sew many layers on top of each other and you cannot do that with a size 90 machine that you sew little blouses on. You need 110 that has the strength to go through many layers. So machine needles are important, otherwise they will break all the time and you don't want that. And then you have rulers are very important. Here's one. This is a shower handle thing that you just uh, buy separately and, and suck onto. This is just sucked onto the ruler. See, you can take it off. Well, you can take it off, see. You can use the ruler, but it's harder to grab the ruler when it doesn't have a handle. Now it sucks onto this and it's so easy to use and then so the ruler is good for marking up, especially, you know, for marking up uh, straps and stuff like that. That's the most necessary things. Here are the tools that are not 100% necessary to start with, but it is nice to have and fun too. A ruler is great to have and this cutting mat is also good to have. And a rotary cutter is great because you just, you just cut along the ruler. That's very, very handy. Rotary cutter and a ruler. What I like is um, double-sided tape. That's, that's very important in my life now. When I make bags, I use this double-sided tape for everything. This is uh, one that's one centimeter. Then it's good to have another one that's half this uh, width. That's good, I don't have it, but I think it's practical if you order it, if that you have it. It's nice to have your own branding, right? Your own brand. Mine is Anne Bonnie for Anne Bonnie bags. I started off with a smaller label and then I progressed to a bigger one. I really want to be seen. <laughs> so um, yeah, so this is four leather that I buy from studio.com, studio.com. And this I bought from, this is woven and I, God knows I bought it from China or somewhere. Let's talk a little about rivets. This is a rivet press. It's so nice to have a rivet press. This is also, this can be used for rivets. You know, those little, little ones that are very decorative and make the bag stronger. In many different, see, we have many different colors and, and also different lengths of the rivet depending on how thick your material is. I find I normally only use the ones that are nine millimeter and these I use for, for um, tassels, sometimes really thick, big tassels. This is a, a die that goes for, for uh, rivets. Then you can put in one for, that, that is perfect for grommets. And grommets are also fun to have on your bag. You know, because uh, it looks so professional. And you can you set that with the same machine. You just buy the, 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 the die that comes with it. That makes it, it cuts a hole and does everything. So it's so much easier than hammering with, with by hand. Normally you can't buy it pink, I think. I painted it pink. They come dark green and it's fun to paint it the color you love because this is the tool that you are going to love. Yeah, and then of course you need a special thread. When you're making bag with vinyl and uh, cork and even leather, you can't use regular sewing thread that you use for clothes anymore. You need a specially thick thread and also, I guess it's cheaper when you buy them in big cones. This is a nylon thread, but bonded nylon is normally good. So it has to be so thick that you cannot tear it off. Of course, when you do rivets, you need this hole punch. You can actually get a die set for this, so you can punch hole with this, but then you have to change that every time you, you, you want to put in a rivet and, stay, and make a hole. So this is so much easier. And it has so many different sizes, although you only need one or two different sizes. This is perfect. You need some specialty tools. This is a set of uh, small screwdrivers. Some are Phillips, some are straight. And, and that's necessary because when you deal with um, uh, clasps, like for instance, uh, twist locks and stuff like that, they have tiny little screws 
see this one for instance have tiny little screws on the back here that you need to unscrew before you install that on the bag a little set of screwdrivers are perfect you only need a couple though and of course you need for markings this is necessary this is not luxury for markings chalk or a chalk pen or a marker uh, that disappears when you iron on it and then a little tool like this is uh, good to have when you deal with prongs on the back of uh, twist uh, clasps and whatnot it's, it's nice to use uh, these and then let's talk about something that's really really fun in one of my tutorials that is for the elisabetha bag elisabetha bag is a free pattern this is elisabetha and uh, it's a cute little bag and you see this decoration here those are dies dies that i buy for this C6 machine. This is a C6, but I think you, there's, there are other brands on the market too. There's some knives inside of this with a pattern, with the pattern. So when you put this and the fabric, put the fabric on top of here, put this through, and then you just, and then you just, you know, go through, the, it goes through the machine itself, and then you cut cut these things you can buy different ones and it's so much fun glue it on first and then you sew around it with the applique with this, this free motion stitch on this bag i have some two different colors also on this bag this is alvid this pattern is not free it's six dollars but you see here i have played and have fun with glitter vinyl and regular vinyl with this seahorses and this um, starfish so it's so much fun this is you can really make your own things very unique and now let's look at the material you need for bag making okay so let's talk about interfacing when you use regular fabric like upholstery fabric or outdoor fabric you have to interface it with some kind of interfacing to make it the bag sturdy if you use waterproof canvas or lining sometimes then you don't have to interface the lining but if you use cotton lining like quilting cotton or something like that you need to interface it with this woven interfacing it has glue on one side so you just cut the same size as the bag and then you you iron it on and here is another interfacing that's fleece and it has glue on one side but this glue i mean the glue isn't sits it's not sticking that great but it gives a little th soft thickness to the bag so this is good to have on the exterior of the bag on the inside of the exterior parts of course so uh, so you do that and then if you need something if you need to be have something that's really firm you can use this rubber foam here see that's nice and thick and it gives a bag a tote bag or another bag a, a nice sturdiness that's really good to have but it's not great to have it in the seams so you kind of have to take um, you can you have to fasten it with glue or double-sided tape or you know get it get it fastened somehow Sometimes, some people like to sew it on and then they cut away the seam allowance of it uh, after, after the seam, cut all the way into the seam. And that's possible, but you will see, depending on what you're doing and how you're using it, you, you have several options. Yeah, so and when we have Decoville light and Decoville heavy, sometimes for bottoms of bags, you want something that's really thick. It's all, sometimes you can even buy a, a little plastic a little sheet of plastic that's thick that won't bend no matter what you do that's great to use for bottoms and also for tops when when you have a handle and the, the top of the bag wants to bend one can use that stiff plastic for that and it's you get that in a building material store <laughs> i don't know what they use it for but i've seen it there and i bought some and it's it's great and of course, as a bag maker, you need zippers because uh, the simplest little bag normally have a zipper. And you don't use the regular zippers that you use for clothes. They're too small. So you, but you can use them on the inside lining if you want. 
So this is, so the zipper come in different sizes. This is size number five. I find that that's really, really good for bag making. So you buy them per yard. These come with a bunch of zipper pulls. I think it's 10 yards with 25 zipper pulls. So that's pretty practical. And then you hold both ends and then you pull and then normally it goes on. Zipper by the yard is really good. Or you could buy a whole roll of uh, the colors that you like the most. See, for if you like colorful bags, colorful zippers are cool. And then you get zipper pulls the same color or just silver or gold or whatever you want. There's so many cool zipper pulls you can buy with uh, all kinds of things. This is a ring. This other thing here was just a little drop. Let's talk a little about the material that you use for bags. Here is waterproof canvas. See here, on one side, it's plastic. On this side, it's canvas. It can be iron on this side, waterproof canvas. It's perfect even on the outside of the bag. A lot of people use it for the inside because it's, it makes, it's very sturdy and, and a little stiff to work with, but it makes, a bag will stand by itself instead of just fall over. And waterproof cam canvas comes in so many uh, different colors and it costs seven, eight dollars a yard, so it's, it's not that expensive. So most people, of course, start off, most people start off with a regular fabric. This is outdoor fabric. That's better because it can take a little water, you know, and, and, and some more tear and wear. So outdoor fabrics, they kind of has this, you know, teflon um, outside. You see? And then you can use all kind of fabric cotton for the inside, but it has to be interfaced, right? And then, or this is also an outdoor fabric. And here I have put fleece on to make it a little sturdier. I did that on these two fleece. That's good enough for those. That's little, for little zipper pouches. And this is another outdoor fabric that I use. Uh, this is not waterproof canvas, but another outdoor fabric that I use for lining for these zi small zipper pouches. As you see, bag makers often use vinyl and cork now. Cork is so cool because it's almost like leather. It's made of a cork tr tree. It's made, this is made in Portugal and it comes in so many patterns and it is really made of, it's not rubber, it is made of cork, but it's so thin and flexible. It has a woven lining that the, that the cork is glued on top of, I think, or for some, in some ways. So this one has gold specks. They have, they, it could have silver specks. So that's pretty cool. It can have flowers like this one. It's cut, the, the cork is cut off in the leaves. See that? And then it's a, so the fabric on the back now shows through. And of course you can get shiny cork. This is still cork, very shiny, but cool. Or like this, cork like this with silver and it looks like little rocks, pretty cool. And then we have vinyl. Vinyl comes in all shapes and form. You can even get vinyl with snake pattern. So here's a regular vinyl. It's, it's nice and don't, don't get one that's too thin and feel, it, feel like you can peel off the color. That, that they are not good. I think marine vinyl is probably the best. That's a little thicker, it's a little harder to work with, but it's sturdy and it won't uh, um, get damaged so easily. Uh, I think this is a kind of cheap vinyl. That's not so good. It's a little more flimsy and I'm thinking it's probably not that, it probably won't last that long. This is like braided pattern. So that's pretty cool. There's one thing that's important when you work with vinyl. That is you have to have a Teflon foot. This is a Teflon foot for the machine. This is a Teflon zipper foot. The other foot is on my machine, but that's necessary. Plastic, Teflon, Teflon, it's plastic really. Even if the vinyl is uh, sticky, this foot will easily go over it. And you want that because a regular metal foot will you know, sometimes get a little stuck on it. And that's no good. So that's a little about the 
fabrics and of course you can use leather for accent as well. You can buy nice beautiful leather that's not that thick. So these are typical bag hardware. Uh, so when you, when you have a bag project you want to do and have decided the pattern, you should order the hardware so you get the same uh, color because you see like this antique gold, this um, turn lock, it's nice uh, antique gold and these, they match. But look here, I ordered gold from two different places and look at the difference in color this is red gold and this is and, and this is yellow gold so and this is yeah so and these are these are strap adjusters you are going to need that too that's these are these are the basic things for a bag and of course rivets as we I showed you before that you use the rivet press for and these are uh, magnetic snaps they snap together so and they come in also silver antique gold gold and a size smaller than this as well if you would just want a small little lock so that's some of the hardware and hardware is fun thank you so much for watching this video today if you are a beginner bag maker you should consider subscribing to my channel because i will make more videos just for you Please feel free to leave comments if you like and ask questions. I hope I see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.